I'm thirsty. Okay. Sheep secretions. Oh. Oh god. Pink slime is about as appetizing as it sounds, and if you're in the United States, chances are it's in some of your meat products. Pink slime is made from all the bits of meat that get cut from the beef along with fat. In order to separate the meat and fat, it gets simmered down and then spun in a centrifuge. After that, all the bits are pushed together through a pipe and treated with ammonia to kill any bacteria. Just talking about it starting to gross me out. It's then dyed pink in order to look like real raw beef beef, formed into blocks and frozen before it's sent off to food processing plants. Pink slime is used as filler in a lot of meat products just like ground beef. Now just how much of it is used is up for debate, with some estimates as high as 10 billion pounds per year. Back in 2012, an ABC News investigation claimed that nearly 70% of ground meat product being sold in grocery stores was actually pink slime. Luckily, it's banned from use in countries like Canada and the European Union. But it still exists in some places and you eating that pink slime yum yum yum. Considering how many ingredients on any processed food label that there are that I can barely pronounce, silicon dioxide probably wouldn't stand out. It also goes by silica and may sound harmless enough, but it's actually sand. Yeah, like let's make a sand castle the entire beach is made from it sand. It's actually used as an anti-caking agent in almost anything from salt to coffee creamer and even peanut butter. The sand absorbs any extra moisture in food products and stops them them from clumping together. It also occurs naturally in plants like beets, peppers, and brown rice. And fortunately, it doesn't seem to have any negative long-term effects on human beings. But rather than stirring up all this sand in our bodies, our kidneys take on the job of filtering it all the way back out. Interestingly, the FDA, the World Health Organization, and the European Food Safety Authority have labeled it as safe so long as you don't eat more than 2% of your meal's weight in it. So in other words, don't go eating bowls of sand because you're gonna be not pooping. You won't be pooping at all, you'll just, you'll die. Few things are as simple and satisfying as ice cream on a hot day. But you'll probably want to opt for another treat soon because a lot of the ice cream that you eat is actually flavored with castorium, otherwise known as beaver anal glands. Castorium is a brown, hold on. Castorium is a brown slimy substance that's basically a mix of urine and anal secretions that's taken from the castor sacs of mature North American and European beavers. The sack is found right under the beaver's tail, right by its butt. And for some reason, it apparently smells really good. S still wouldn't want to lick it. It's actually been used by humans for centuries, and today it's used in a lot of perfumes. It's also considered safe for humans to eat. It's actually really common in strawberry, raspberry, and vanilla flavored foods. And since it comes from an animal and is not made from chemicals, it can actually be labeled as naturally flavored. This is good ice cream. What is that, beaver anus? So the chances are that you've probably already eaten it, but it probably wasn't the natural flavor that you were hoping for, was it? Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was, you sicko. If you ever thought that your fruit punch was red from all the natural strawberries and raspberries that are in it, think again. Carmine is that vibrant red color you find in anything from ice cream to Skittles, and it's actually made from insects. Cochineal beetles are dried out, ground down, and boiled in ammonia to release the carminic acid. The signature red is created when it's mixed with aluminum. It's supposed to be safe for humans, but after reports of some people suffering from major allergic reactions, it's it's now required to be clearly labeled as an ingredient on foods. In fact, in 2012, Starbucks was in hot water when it moved away from using artificial ingredients and went natural by using carmine in its strawberry frappuccinos. After a vegan website started a petition against them, Starbucks agreed to stop putting bugs in their drinks in April of 2012 and said that they'd go with real strawberries instead. And this whole time you thought you were having real strawberries? No, baby! Bug shells! 
If you've ever found a hair in your food, you might want to convince yourself that it's your own. But if you're like me, you might just have to suck it up and accept that it's definitely not. In boxes of macaroni and cheese, one rodent hair per 50 grams is allowed, and one hair per 100 grams is allowed in chocolate and peanut butter. And apparently, it's even more common in making spices. In fact, ground sage has the highest allowance with nine hairs per 10 grams. Mm -mm. The FDA allowed amounts of rodent hair is a small enough amount to not be harmful to humans, and it's labeled as a natural contaminant. Human hair is also found in food, but not by accident. When broken down, human hair contains an amino acid called L-cysteine, and it's used in commercial bread products to give them longer shelf life. Local bakeries likely don't use it since it's not added to flour, but it is common in buns and bread items at fast food restaurants. Oh, your hair bun, sir? Enjoy. Chewing on gum can be a pretty satisfying habit. That is until you find out what's making it so chewy. Lanolin is commonly added to gum to make it soft, and it comes from sheep wool secretions. Yummy! It's also known as wool grease and is a natural occurrence in woolly animals that produce the oily substance through their glands in their skin. Lanolin is made when the wool is sheared from the sheep and washed in hot water with a special detergent that will remove the wool grease. Mmm, wool grease. It's then spun in a centrifuge to separate the grease from the dirt, skin cells, and anything else that's stuck in there. But you might better recognize it as what it's commonly referred to, which is gum base. It's also used in vitamin D3 supplements in case you were wondering. Since it's naturally waxy and waterproof, it's a great lubricant and is used in a lot of cosmetics and baby products. It's also used in expensive skincare products as a treatment for eczema and wounds. But you most likely have been chewing it all day long. <laughs> Oily gum, num nums. Have you ever bought shredded cheese and wondered why it seemed a bit, you know, dusty? Well, it's not just extra cheesy goodness, but actually cellulose, or as it's most commonly known, sawdust. The sawdust is from virgin wood pulp and is used in shredded and grated cheese to stop it from clumping together. In 2016, an investigation by the FDA found that some Parmesan cheese brands that were claiming to be 100% real contained up to almost 9% wood Wood pulp. But it's not just cheese that can come with a side of wood. It's also in baked goods, ice cream, and crackers, and even as filler in meat products. I think I'm starting to see why people don't eat meat. It's pretty cheap for food manufacturers and extends a product's shelf life. It can also act as fiber, and because of its absorbent properties, it's used to lower fat content. It's supposed to be safe for humans, but the USDA has said that at least in meat, any more than 3.5% cellulose and a product is no longer nutritionally sound. You hear that? So don't think you're gonna lose weight by going out and just eating a tree. It's gonna mess y'all up. Okay, we're talking about poop again. I'm all for a little extra flavor and whatnot, but animal poop is definitely not the same as sriracha. In the FDA's subtly named Defect Level Handbook, over 100 foods are listed, along with the maximum amount an item can be contaminated before a food manufacturer has to get rid of it. And animal poop, or as they call it, mammalian excreta, is one of those contaminants. The guidelines basically say that whether it's when the food is harvested, being prepared in a plant, or all the times it gets transported, it's impossible not to get a little extra bits in it. Mouse droppings, in particular, are actually pretty common. In most herbs and spices, only one milligram per pound is allowed, which is basically no trace. However, the highest levels are allowed in wheat, which can have nine milligrams of poop per pound, and cocoa beans with 10 milligrams per pound. But let's be honest, really any poop is too much poop in my opinion. 
food is great for keeping food from rotting over long periods of time. But there's a price to pay for that luxury and the cost is maggots. It turns out that maggots and other bits of insects aren't that rare in our tinned food. According to the FDA, up to 20 maggots are allowed in 100 grams of drained mushrooms. And maggots aren't the only things living in your canned goods. Insect eggs, particularly from fruit flies, are often found in maraschino cherries, canned tomatoes, and citrus fruit. And what's most disturbing is that the FDA rules get pretty particular. For example, one cup of citrus juice can have one maggot, but not if it already has five or more insect eggs. Now that would just be crazy. Mushrooms also attract mites, and up to 75 mites are allowed per 100 grams. The same goes for canned and frozen spinach, which have 50 mites, so long as there aren't larvae over three millimeters long already in there. Here's a, you know, a reasonable question. Who's measuring these things? Ew! It's one thing not to want to waste any food, but this is taking that to a whole nother level. Mechanically separated meat, or MSM, is also known as mechanically deboned meat and is less about separating all the meat that gets used in our food from the animal's body and more about mushing everything together. Basically, after an animal is butchered, all the leftover pieces of meat and connective tissue, including bits of bone and cartilage, are smashed together and forced through a sieve at an incredibly high pressure. This forms a white meat paste and is used in products like hot dogs and bologna. There was controversy that some fast food joints were using it in their chicken, but almost all of them now use all white meat. MSM poultry and pork is still used in human food, but because of all the bacteria, mad cow disease became a big concern for mechanically separated beef and it was eventually banned. Thank God. Yeah. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching this, and if you enjoyed it, or you just learned something, maybe you laughed a little bit, drop a like on it, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll have a brand new video for you tomorrow at 12 West Coast Time, 3 Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you come by then. Have a great day. I'll see you. Bye!